In this video, I'm going to talk about the two pad controllers that I use, uh, which are the Machine Mark III and the Akai MPD-218. And uh, I've used the Akai MPD-218 for quite a while before switching to the Machine Mark III, and I'm going to tell you why I switched and uh, why I still think that the Akai MPD-218 is a great buy if you just get started with finger drumming. The Quest for Proof! Okay, so I'm not going to beat around the bush. Uh, if you ask me which of the two devices I would take with me to a deserted island, uh, you know, given that there's power there so I can play finger drums, uh, which of the two I would take with me to the deserted island, I would take the Machine Mark III because, in my opinion, it is the superior device. But obviously, um, for most people, it's not really a deserted island kind of question. The question is more like, what gives you the best value for money or what is the best buy for you right now at this point in your finger drumming career. All right, uh, let's get into why the Machine Mark III is superior. And that's not because of all the extra buttons that it has. And I know the device is not completely shown here, but over here in this area, there's a lot more buttons that I'm all not using. Because for finger drumming, what I do, I just set the thing in MIDI mode. I trigger an electronic drum kit with it and that's it. So I just use these pads. And I'm grateful for this little screen over here to make it a little more clear what I'm playing when I'm uh, teaching something. But in a way, the difference between this device and this device is actually that this device is a lot more compact and actually superior in that sense because I'm not using anything else but the pads. So um, the reason I still think the Machine Mark III is superior to the MPD-218 is that the pads are more sensitive. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you by doing a little thing on the snare. I'm tapping super, super softly. As you can hear, it triggers. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the MPD-218. Nothing happens, I have to give it. You know, I have to go into a higher velocity layer before the pads even start triggering. So yeah, does that matter a lot? Well. I don't think it matters a lot when you're just starting out because when you're just starting out, you play beats like this one. And that's actually fine. Oh, hit a sudden crash there. As soon as you start getting into more complex grooves where you play a lot of ghost notes, like ghost notes are usually very softly played notes or you want to play this alternating hi-hat pattern with one hand. Uh, as you notice, like I can play this pattern on both devices, but here sometimes it doesn't trigger. Well, now it does trigger somehow, but take it from me that this device triggers more reliably than the MPD-218. So obviously there's a big price difference between these two devices. So you have the $600 machine and the $100 MPD-218. and it's obvious that a $600 machine is not six times as good as this $100 machine. So if you want good value for money and you're just starting out, I still think you should buy this device. But there's one but. Um, I'm going to demonstrate this hi-hat thing for you right now. Oh, that triggers quite well. I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to plug in another MPD-218. So this is another one that I bought. I'm gonna try and trigger the hi-hat the same way. Hey! It doesn't trigger as well. And this is something I noticed that obviously this is a low-budget device and uh, not all MPD-218s are created equal. So um, even though I think it's a great device, if you get the wrong one from the factory, it's not that great of a device. Uh, and a little trick that I used to get a good MPD-218 was actually spend $500, order five MPD-218s, check them all out, and then return them all except for the one that I thought was the best. And uh, that way I got this other device. I'm gonna plug it back in because obviously I like this one the most. Maybe if you look closely, you can see that this one is a little more worn out because I've used it way more. Uh, here. Here. 
now the pad triggers perfectly fine. So I hear you thinking like, if this thing is so bad in terms of like quality control, uh, why not buy another uh, brand of pad controller that doesn't have these quality issues? And the truth is, this is still the best low budget thing available, period. It's great, great, great quality, great value for money in terms of what you get for $100. And uh, I don't think there's any other brand, any other uh, pad controller on the market available right now that actually delivers this amount of accuracy for $100. And I've played it for years. I, before I had the Machine Mark III, this was just the best thing I could find. So it's definitely not a bad device. You just have to go through some trouble to maybe get the perfect one. Okay, so, but there might be a reason for you to just go ahead and buy this Machine Mark III right away, uh, even if you're just starting out. And that is, um, if you don't have a sound card yet, that costs another, at least another hundred dollars. And the this device has a sound card built in. So if you ha have a sound card built in, you still pay four hundred dollars more than for this one, but you know, you're getting closer. And the truth is, this is the superior device. And if you're planning on doing some beat making or actually using this uh, drumming workstation kind of thing, the way it's meant to be used, uh, then I definitely think switching to a Machine Mark III right away would be a good choice. You know, I'm a guitar player myself, and you can kind of compare this whole dilemma between this device and this device with, uh, you know, buying a cheap guitar or buying an expensive guitar. Yes, it's true that if you buy an expensive, high-quality guitar, it's going to improve your playing as well because it's just a superior device. It responds better to what you're doing. But uh, when I just started out, uh, my mom didn't want to buy me a super expensive Fender Stratocaster or something. I think she bought me a cheap ass guitar and I had to learn and I have to see if it was something for me. And then when uh, I really advanced and I really wanted to take my playing to the next level, I also invested in a better instrument. And I think that's exactly the way to approach this. So you can start out with this and then if you're getting serious or you're getting more advanced, invest in a better instrument. Keep an eye out for more videos on this channel. I'll be back next week, Thursday. See you then.